coordinating traces, slavery at Ashland. And so today I want to really walk you through our process of how we were able to develop this very strategically placed, intentional, and equitable tour that is the only guided tour focused on slavery in the state of Kentucky. So two years ago, Jim Clark, the executive director here at Ashland, approached myself and Trevor and pitched an idea that Ashland and its board and its staff were interested in starting a conversation of either expanding its signature tour or creating a tour on its own focused on slavery. So we jumped in alongside with Dr. Amy Taylor from the University of Kentucky, Ms. Tony King, the Lyric Theater, Ms. Yvonne Giles, and other stakeholders within the African American community here in Lexington to really devote um, our intentional expertise and skills in developing a chronicle of the people who are oftentimes hidden in plain sight. So we start our tour here at the Farm Road. Ashland being a 400 acre plantation that spanned all the way down to modern Main Street and stretched all the way out to modern Todd's Road and beyond. This farm road starts off our conversation that highlights our two themes really dug into and baked into the concepts of our tour. Yes, we're speaking about slavery in the middle of a global pandemic, in the middle of financial loss and tragic loss of life from a pandemic that has taken over 100,000 lives. And on this blackout Tuesday, we stand in solidarity across the country with people speaking up against oppression. So as we look at this farm road and we think about the families separated through the institution of slavery, we want to expand upon the ability to parallel what was happening in the life of not only the enslaved people here at Ashland, the Henry Clay Estate, but what was happening within the children's lives, the lives of Lucretia Clay and Henry Clay himself, respectively. We are paralleling the, the grave differences of freedom and enslavement. Through the resistance, you see people continuing in their bonds and holding on and creating culture within their slave quarters. And as we worked through traces at slavery at Ashland, we wanted to return slavery to the landscape. Unfortunately, the present day uh, landscape of Ashland is absent of those artifacts, of the, these memories etched in time. We only have one picture of Mr. Charles Dupuis and this beautiful sketch as we start these tours to the public every single day, starting on June 16th. Unfortunately, we won't be able to go into the mansion, but when that indoor portion opens back up, we have this gorgeous portrait, actually an only rendering of a Dupuy, Aaron Dupuy, who greeted the stately guest of Henry Clay, who stated that his importance, even though he didn't have a voice to speak up for himself and fight for himself. So as we begin this tour, we really want to anchor folks into the lives of the enslaved here at Ashland and Henry Clay Estate. We want to be able to put into perspective how large the plantation was and how folks would be spread out doing different jobs, different duties, different things that they were assigned to. We want to evoke your empathy by focusing on historic documents and sources that not only engage our emotions, but ask ourselves to dig deeper. And so one of the reasons why Black Soil Our Better Nature engaged in this process was because we truly believe that if we can historically interpret agriculture, it gives us a better sense of understanding our American history, which then leads us back to understanding more clearly the institution of American slavery. Because you see, the legacy and heritage of African Americans and farming in this country are deeply rooted and entangled into the forced free labor heaped upon them through enslavement. But also, white Americans share in this history as well. And this now, in this time of our country where many people are reaching out and asking, what can I do? How can I be engaged? We want to invite you to 
come onto this tour and increase your knowledge to challenge your thinking about the history that we've been taught so freely. Because we ask if Mr. Henry Clay was in Washington for 25 years, who was running Ashland the Henry Clay estate? Who was cultivating the hemp? Who was caring for his award-winning, race-winning horses? So we dig deep into historically interpreting agriculture that says, well, who was cultivating the hemp? Who was preparing the meal inside of the mansion? Who was doing the labor that heat the great wealth? We want to be able to back up and ask those questions that not only evoke empathy, but they evoke a deeper understanding of our collective hope for our future through our shared understanding of our history. So as we continue on this tour, this is a different tour compared to the other um, signature tour, the women at Ashland. Now during this live video, we'll continue talking with each other, but what you'll experience when you come on the tour is silence and reflection. Because of the deep, traumatic themes present within the experiences of the enslaved, this is a gesture that our stakeholders decided upon collectively out of respect for the people who lived here, who toiled here, who were invisible in many ways, but others were able to reap great financial benefit from their suffering. So, as we continue on our tour, we not only want to walk you through the, the life and the culture of the living quarters here at the farm road that starts us off, we also want to really tackle the challenging themes and concepts that are oftentimes swept underneath the rug when it comes to speaking about our great statesmen and the institution of slavery and their role in participation. So we come to a anecdote, a story, about a young woman here at Ashland the Henry Clay Estate who was in charge of caring for the chicken. Now, based upon historical documents and sources we've been able to uh, secure, thanks to our great staff here at Ashland the Henry Clay Estate, we've been able to gain a better understanding of the sexual exploitation and relationships that happen here. We were, were able to learn more about this woman and her account of the, ch the alleged children that she had with Henry Clay. And that's not only her words, but it's a letter conversation through um, mail of a former overseer here at Ashland Henry Clay estate and his brother speaking about these relationships that Henry Clay had with the people here at, at his estate. So we really worked very hard to not only hold folks accountable for their participation in the institution of enslavement, but we also wanted to offer a voice for the people who were oftentimes stripped of their dignity and stripped of their safety. So we continue to speak about the historic interpretation of agriculture by traveling to the smokehouse. So again, on this 400 acre plantation, now presently only 17 acres, a lot of agricultural production happened here. From specialty crops, to hemp, to equine. Henry Clay was the epitome of Kentucky industry. Not only was he the epitome of Kentucky industry, the enslaved people at this estate were highly skilled innovators. Not only were they cultivated to work here on the estate, but outside people were able to lease their labor, and not only were the Henry Clay able to benefit, but they were able to benefit yet again off of the commodification of their labor and their community. So here in the smokehouse, we explore a story that is sourced from archived and historical documents about Mr. Lewis Richardson. When you come on the tour, you hear a very powerfully um, constructed and replicated voiceover of a speech that Mr. Lewis Richardson presented in Canada after fleeing and escaping from slavery in Kentucky from Ashland the Henry Clay estate. This powerful and moving speech is voiced by Whit Whitaker, the executive director of the Lyric Theater. And that just continues to go to show how we pulled from our community and really focus strategically on our partnerships and empowering others to have a voice and a role in this new tour. So within the smokehouse, 
we continue to break down how enslaved workers here at Ashland and Henry Clay Estate not only uh, perfected and, and innovated the cultivation of hemp, but they were also leading in animal husbandry through swine and mules, sheep, chicken, cattle. Henry Clay is often referred to as the scientific farmer. And so not only do we want to expand upon who receives that designation, but we also want to remind people that modern day agriculture is still highly based on exploitive labor practices. So again, as we historically interpret agriculture through slavery and um, different historic instances and circumstances, it lends us the opportunity to learn more about our present day circumstances and conditions. Institutions and systems created hundreds of years ago still reap benefits and enact, enact consequences upon people across this nation and this world. So as we stated before, right now the mansion is closed, but when we take the tour, when everything in the world opens back up, allowing that, we will explore the more intimate labor of the enslaved people in the Clay family through the domestic work happening within the house. So that looks anywhere from rearing and caring for children, as we highlight Charlotte Dupuy alongside of her husband Charles and her family, Erin. And we look at how these families, though enslaved people were listed on ledgers uh, next to chickens and cows as property, were looked to uphold and gird entire households and their functionality to care and nurture for children, to raise up crops and feed people. It's an interesting mental dynamic and we look to resources such as Trace's Slavery Ashland to help move us along to a better understanding and a better absorption of the truth because we know the truth will set us free and history is one of our best teachers. So as we continue on this journey of exploring slavery here at Ashland, we want to encourage you to uh, visit us online and secure your tickets because on June 16th, we are going to premiere this tour every single day starting at 1 p.m. And so before coronavirus hit us, we were on track to really launch into um, this initiative in May, excuse me, in March. And we were really circling the wagon of amplifying a story, amplifying a narrative that is so core to America, its functionality, and its future. Looking forward to solutions, looking forward to ways that we as a country can grow together in strength. So as we look to joining you on this tour, we encourage you to share this information, share this tool, share this resource, because not only is this tour uh, available to the public, but we're developing additional information for teachers and, and public school systems and educators on how to teach the history of him more inclusively and more wholly. And we want to be able to provide those resources in enabling folks to understand that when you think of hemp and tobacco and specialty crops and the equine industry and bourbon, you cannot eliminate, exclude, or ignore the African American contributions, innovations, and ingenuity here in this state and in this country. So we invite you, like I said, to join us. We're really excited to, again, offer this resource at a time where many are looking dismayed, when many are looking for uh, a next step. And so we believe this is a great next step for you to take. We look forward to seeing you on June 16th, starting at 1 p.m. Thank you so much, Ashley, and I'm going to open it up for questions now. So if anybody in the comment section has any questions, please go ahead and drop those to us right now. We're going to stay on for just a second to allow you to ask those questions. Um, and we apologize for the leaf blowing that we, was at the beginning of the tour. So if you missed anything, if you couldn't hear something we said, we'd be happy to repeat it. Ashley, can you tell me? maybe one of your, um, one realization that maybe you had in, in studying this history. Yeah, so, you know, 
I'm from Lexington and my biggest realization is how large the initial estate was um, over you know, 400 600 acres collectively and that's pretty much as I said a large corridor of all the way from downtown to almost to Richmond so the expansiveness and the need for labor um, the expansive need for labor to maintain such an operation it's one of the greatest realizations of really being able to pull back and help the greater community understand that Mr. Clay did not accomplish and achieve or reach this point by himself. That's perfect. Thank you for sharing. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about the work that Black Soil does and why it's important and how you actually got involved and why you're working with Ashland. So Black Soil exists because when we put a seed in the ground, the soil doesn't see the color of the hand in which sowed that seed. Yet and still, we have enormous inequities and disparities represented in modern American agriculture. In Kentucky alone, the average product valuation for farm products coming off of Black-owned farms is around 10 million. Compared to their white farm counterparts and the valuation of their farm products being valued at over 5 billion. So truly, if you really look at the nuts and bolts of agriculture, it's one of the greater equalizers, the, the, one of the industries that you could really have a, a lot more equity. And so based upon systems and institutions such as slavery that provided enormous amounts of wealth accumulation versus no wealth accumulation, again, the systematic and institutionalized racism has allowed that disparity and that gap to happen. And so we were involved with this work prior to being engaged with um, Ashland and Clay Estate. So in August of 2017, we piloted a farm tour series in Hart County, Kentucky on a 150 acre black owned farm. The family where four out of the seven siblings have returned to farming, they were former sharecroppers who purchased the land from the tenant farmer. And so since then, Andre Barber and his siblings who are farming with him have run a CSA, run cattle, dairy, so on and so forth. And so through relationship-centered uh, placemaking, we piloted a farm tour that basically helped us build our infrastructure. So we want to help African Americans and people who have been disconnected because of traumatic negative connotations and narratives such as enslavement the real PTSD of feeling that, the real understanding of, of having wealth stolen up underneath you for the work that you've done. Um, we wanted to be able to put people on site. And so through the farm tour, we're able to allow folks to not only engage directly with the producer, we allow them to see what goes on, what goes into farming. Then the farm to table concept looks at dismantling a lot of health disparities around uh, you know, nutrition and access to local foods, uh, such as seasonal produce, local meats. And so engaging not only that experience on the farm by seeing farming happen, but being able to taste not only the fruit of the labor of that farmer, but how incredibly delicious and high quality local food is. And so that education um, has spun out to consulting around historic interpretation. We have led conversations with the Jack Jewett House, the Bibb Mansion um, in Logan County, Jack Jewett House in Woodford County. We facilitated conversations with James Madison's Montpelier um, with Ashland and Henry Clay Estate. And so when they approached us in 2018, we were already a good year into our work. And the concepts of what Jim and Cameron and Eric and their stakeholders are wanting to incorporate in the signature tour quickly spawn into its own kind of standing entity and thus traces was birth and so we are involved because we truly believe that we have to to provide a voice to the millions of enslaved people who toiled and innovated our um, modern American industry and are oftentimes so marginalized that you forget that they even exist so we're proud to support uh, black farmers, chefs, vendors, and artists here in the state of Kentucky. We operate in about 23 counties. Um, right now, they're about 1.4% um, 
of the entire kind of farm population in Kentucky are black farmers. So we're working to help them increase their markets, help them develop relationships, because we truly believe that food connects us and art tells a story of that connection. And we have produce with a purpose. And so as we tell the story of the past, it informs us as a people of how to gain up the information so we can work towards self-development and self-sufficiency through agriculture. And so, you know, my background is as a sociologist, I always want the individual to see how the system is affecting them and vice versa, how that system affects, excuse me, the individual. And so through this work of Black Soil and the work of Farmer Brown, the NC, through my partner Trevor Claiborne, we've really been able to have a holistic approach of reaching the youth and the families to build a pipeline of future farmers and all the way up to our adult population of having conversations that really uh, jolt what you've always thought was true. And so we respectfully and kindly want to inch our way in but also beat the door down to say like enough is enough and it is time for us to really embrace a more holistic full picture and history of what happened here in Lexington, Kentucky and beyond. So we thank you again and if there are any other questions I'm happy to entertain. Them. Yeah so we have a lot of people who are responding to what a powerful project Black Soil is and and actually if you want to learn more you can go to blacksoilky.com. That's right, um, There you go. And so our work right now is focusing, obviously we're in the middle of our production season of really helping farmers cultivate their product through markets, through serving uh, young women who are facing single parenthood, getting uh, nonprofits connected to meals. We're really here to service our community through agriculture. And um, again, as we look to continue our partnership with Henry Clay Estate, this is just the beginning. There are public houses across the state. I um, mean, again, they here at Ashland, we're really pioneering this as the only guided tour focused on slavery in, in Kentucky. And so we know that slavery didn't only happen in Fayette County, but we also know that there's a chance for other historic public houses to reach out and build a consortium. So we're really speaking this truth holistically. As we look to the future of what we'd like to see happen with Traces, we'd like to lead initiatives to help people, um, descendants of enslaved people um, still residing in Kentucky or here in the region to help be more connected to their ancestors and their work here at Ashland and Henry Clay Estate. So this is just the beginning. And if you are interested in learning more, this is a great first step to take. Perfect. We do have one question which is from Elaine McDonald and she asks, what happened to people who were um, enslaved at Ashland? Freedom came, where did they go? What did they do? So some folks like the Dupuy family stayed at Ashland. Uh, the majority of folks either left the estate or they stayed as employees. And that's one of the things that uh, you really learn as you study the institution of slavery, the lack of documentation of where folks went is very, very limited. So people like Miss Yvonne Giles, like Miss Joyce Johnson, like Miss Tony King, who are these like history warriors who really fight um, hard to dig deep into genealogy and archives to help tell us, help guide us as to what happened to people. It wasn't a just, the story didn't finish. You know, slavery didn't end and people just vanished. Um, so that yet again is a, another future phase of how Ashland and its stakeholders can help cultivate a larger engagement with our community. Thank you. So one last thing I want um, you to touch on is the idea that today um, a lot of social media we're, we're pausing or we're, we're taking time to reflect so I wanted you to tell us why we decided to go go forward with this this morning. Yeah, so we decided to go forward with presenting today's preview because for so many years the people who were enslaved here at Ashland and Henry Clay Estate had no voice, were disappeared, were vanished, were not regarded, though you can see the imprint of them all over. You can see their legacy. So we blacked out Ashland the Henry Clay Estate today by telling the truth. 
by inviting you into a resource that you can engage with, that you can participate with here in your city, that you can begin teaching your children and your descendants the truth and the role that they play in creating a more equitable and just future for us all. So that is why we chose to move forward with going live today to speak about, speak their names, to show you and to tell you emphatically that their Black Lives Matter. So we thank you for listening and joining us today and we look forward to seeing you on June 16th.